How many cups of coffee should you drink per day according to science? I love these type of things. Yeah. And you the could more read, you know. Well, you could, but you could read one one week and the next week is contradicting the last one. Uh -huh. Like, remember that article you read last week? Telling you you were drinking just the right amount of coffee. Well, they're like these new scientists. New, new science. Yeah. New studies over here. Yeah. We, <laughs> never mind the old studies. We got a study for you. We got a weekly study. Mm -hmm. Coffee may have health benefits, but we're still figuring out the optimal amount. Well, I'll tell you that my consumption has been going up. I'll tell you that right now. It's been constantly going it's up. It's just been going up. What about you? You you peeled back. You peeled um, back or are you going I've up? I've stayed consistent. You're a consistent Maybe type. a cup a day. Cup a day. Two cups? Huh? A cup is small, Will. A cup is smaller than you think. A cup of coffee. Yeah. I think you're two cups minimum. Yeah. Okay, sure. Recent study draws from the UK Biobank, where the average age is 58. Slightly more than half the participants are women, and roughly 95% are white. On average, the researchers were able to follow participants for 12 years after they answered a question about how much coffee they drink. If we look at the death from all causes, death from all causes, people who drank two to three cups of coffee per day had the lowest risk. <gasps> okay. And that applies whether they were drinking ground instant or decaf. For cardiovascular disease, those drinking one cup a day had the lowest risk, but for arrhythmia, regular heartbeat, the sweet spot appeared to be four to five cups. Whoa. And the arrhythmia results, decaf coffee was not associated with a reduction in risk, so it's caffeine related in that case. Plenty of limitations in this study, as there would be in any study. This group of middle-aged British folks may not represent the rest of the world particularly well. Uh, income, social class, and perceived health risks can contribute to that choice. Just to name a few, Brits also tend to drink a lot of instant coffee and espresso, it turns out. Researchers, there's like tea in there as well. <laughs> they're loving the tea. Yeah. Yeah, they, and I know. How so I, I'm sure. Mix? I'm sure as part of the study. You okay, have them both, yeah, I'm yeah. guessing. Uh, but anyway, uh, they looked at dozens of previous coffee studies and concluded that people who drink coffee have lower risk of cardiovascular disease, disease, including strokes, some cancers, and some liver and gastrointestinal disorders. I don't know. Listen, let me tell you something. Well, I think it's like a lot of things. Okay. Where, I mean, a study is nice. I uh, like, you know, studies good, get a bigger number. Sure, there's like a grounded Yeah, but, base. but I think... People can overdo it as well. And I think you kind of got to, everybody's going to have a different tolerance level and it's going to have different effects on different people. Mm -hmm. You know, there's an effect or, or, or there's not for people who have a higher tolerance, like as far as the physical effect of it. Yeah. You know, I'm sure if you, if you right now, if you just sat there and drank 10 cups of coffee, what what are you gonna be like? No, oh, I wouldn't be sitting. That's for sure. What are you gonna be doing? What's gonna happen to your body? Yeah, specifically. I'll just be buzzing. Like you know, I feel like it's not gonna be healthy for you. Oh well, yeah, for sure. I feel like yeah. So, but it is. Uh, but I feel like I can drink coffee forever. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, ten might not do anything for you you know I, I go up i go down i drink this i drink that and yeah. i try to figure it out i feel like you know what i feel like well i can eat my way out of coffee just uh eat a giant burrito if i'm if i got too much coffee going on i feel like i can eat something and then i'm back to level playing field mm. but maybe not maybe not yeah, at a certain point i feel that way too sometimes it kind of I don't know the science, but it, it uh, dilutes it a little bit. We don't know the science, Will. Well, nobody does because, like I told you, we got a new study every couple of days, yeah. and they're going to say, well, yeah, you're not going to get the arrhythmia, but you're going to get this one instead. And so, At least here it says four cups or less to be safe. Yeah, they say coffee consumption for non oh, non pregnant adults as well. Yeah, that obviously pregnant's different. FDA has cited 400 milligrams per day of caffeine as an amount not generally associated with dangerous negative effects. Yeah. 400 milligrams. And of course, keep in mind, it's not just coffee that contains caffeine. A lot of those drinks with the fancy graphics, when you go to the convenience store or the gas station, you're getting, there's many ways to get caffeine. So you yeah. can keep that into the equation as well. But whatever, shout out to the coffee drinkers. Maybe it's not that bad. Might after all. Be. 